At Tiwa Kitchen Restaurant and Bakery, a native-owned and operated business, Debbie and Ben Sandoval have been warming the souls of their people through the Orna, a hand-built outdoor oven that's been part of Taos Pueblo cuisine for centuries. I've heard legendary reviews about their squash cake, enchiladas, fry bread tacos, and cookies. But what I'm really here for is their fresh outdoor oven bread. Debbie? Oh, hey! hey. <laughs> We're hugging. Nice come to meet on. You. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Thanks for letting me come in. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do some bread. Oh, you put me to in work. In the outdoor oven. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> you wanted Roll to my see how it's up. done. I did want to see how Let's it's do done. Do it. All right. So, what are we making here, Debbie? We're making some outdoor oven bread. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I don't think I've ever made bread before. <laughs> this is my well, first. It'll be fun. Good. I'll show you how. And tell me everything you're doing. So. We make a loaf like this, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna put it in the pan. Okay. There? There? This. Oh, cool. This one. Grease it up a little bit on okay. top, Just and then like this. push it down. Push it yeah. down. I'll start to the edges. It's my first time making a cooking show. <laughs> She's like, not pushing hard enough. It's like Play-Doh, but <laughs> you really can eat it. You know? Yep. <laughs> it's fun. I like to play with the dough. <laughs> Apparently, so do I. <laughs> so all these need to end up in these pans. I have been slacking. All right, here we go. Get the air out, like Debbie taught me. What do you call this bread? Alcune, in our language. Alcune. 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 Bread. Okay. Mm -hmm. Debbie learned how to bake this traditional bread from watching her mother-in-law. As Taos became more of a destination, they saw an opportunity to share their cuisine with others and open Tiwa 30 years ago. What does it mean to you to pick up this tradition and kind of keep it going? It feels good. My, my daughter and my granddaughters know how to do it. Mm. I'm really, really proud of that. So from a grandmother to a granddaughter passing this down. Yeah. Learning this way is challenging my inner perfectionist. I'm used to following recipes, but Debbie, she don't work that way. If my wife were here now, she would laugh at this because I always, I like to know the instructions very clearly and follow them very precisely. And you're just like, smash, smash. I'm like, no, no, how many smashes? Is that five, five and a half smashes? Okay, Yeah, good. as long as it's flat down, you're good. Flat. All right. <laughs> what is in the bread? I mean, I'm assuming some kind of flour. Yeah, we just use regular all-purpose flour. Okay. A little bit of salt, yeast, and a little bit of grease. Grease right on the outside, that's it. And so, so the magic is from the oven, it sounds like. Yeah. We're going to go make a fire now. I'll introduce you to my husband, Ben. So I get to play with Play-Doh that I can eat and make a fire. Yeah. This is a dream day. <laughs> hey, Ben, this is Baratunde. Oh, hello there. What's up, Ben? <laughs> Glad to meet you. Nice he to meet you to too. How to make the fire. <gasps> she made me make the bread. I'm gonna make some fire with you. Ooh. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you, right, Debbie. Let's see if I'll, I'll try that. All right, Ben. So I've never seen an oven like this before. What is it? Well, we call it okuto in our language. Okay. We use cedar wood. That's the only wood that we use because okay. it's clean. Clean wood. And it's, yeah. it smells really nice and then the bread flavors with the Yeah, smoke. I love the smell of cedar. Uh -huh. yeah. Can I help you uh, load up the oven? Sure. You can grab some wood there about an arm load. Okay, by the arm load. One more? Okay. That should do. Should do. Yeah. Throw it in. There you go. Is how do we light this fire? With a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a modern twist on yeah. the old ways. Yeah, okay. yeah. Like this. Where do I want to put this? Maybe right beside this other. There we go. Okay. Oh, that does smell good. So, how do you know what the temperature in that oven is? How do you know when it's ready? We put four arm loads mm -hmm. and we just hope that it's hot enough. Hope? That's yeah. your thermometer? Is yeah, hope? Let's hope, <laughs> it's hope it's hot enough because we might redo the bread. Thank you. I was curious because I didn't see any dials on here. Yeah. I didn't see a thermostat on. So you just know tradition is the answer. Yeah. Ornos are handmade with dirt, straw, and rock. It can take up to two weeks to build one. And it's not an easy process. But Debbie and Ben are carrying on this tradition the same way their ancestors did centuries ago. She's just all up in there. I've never done that to a fire. 
<laughs> this is an operation. This is hard work. It's time consuming and a bit unpredictable. But the dedication and love that Ben and Debbie put into the bread every single day is inspiring. Now we gotta close it up. Half an hour. Now we Hopefully. time it. That's to make sure the bread doesn't escape. Yeah. yeah. They're we banging no on runners. the other side. Let us out, let us out. It's we here. locked the dough boy in there. <laughs> <laughs> Baking is a science that Debbie and Ben know intuitive. There's no measuring cups, no thermometer. Just a lot of practice and a little bit of faith. All right. Nice. Outdoor oven bread. Try one of those, Debbie? Thank you. Let me try. All right. Yeah. Everybody out. The oven is empty. Look at that. Right. Look what we did. Ah. Yes, for us. <laughs> How do you feel? Do you feel any differently when you're cooking outdoors from cooking inside in the kitchen here? It's harder, of mm. course, because I enjoy it, though. Why do you think you enjoy it? Harder things, I don't enjoy. <laughs> I enjoy hard less. But you said it's harder, and I enjoy it more. Why? Cooking outdoors is just fun. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I love to grill outdoors. Cooking outdoors is fun. And then all of the stuff that's involved with it, it's like getting wood. We have to go get wood to bake. So that's what we love, being outdoors. We, we go get our wood together, me and him. Still? Yeah. That is so romantic. Wow. Yeah. How did you two meet? We met in our canyon up that way. OK. Come on. Yeah, me and my friends were camping out. Just four girls camping out in the canyon. Way up there. So we said, you guys want some Kool-Aid? <laughs> that was your line? That's your first move? Yeah. You offer Kool-Aid? <laughs> well, Debbie is we smooth. Give, we give them slow gin with Kool-Aid. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's what it was. They didn't know. Roped you right in. Oh, man. Yep, real me in right there. <laughs> Tiwa Kitchen is a special place because it operates as both a mom and pop restaurant and a cultural preservation project, keeping history alive through food. House Pueblo's been here generations. So our yeah. ancestors, they fought hard to keep this land. Mm. Their ancestors' legacy shaped New Mexico, most notably through the Puebloan Revolt of 1680. When the Spanish arrived in the 1500s, they began taking lands, forcing conversions to Catholicism, and enslaving Pueblo peoples. Over many years, the Puebloans organized an uprising and sent the Spaniards packing. It's considered the most successful native rebellion in history. Though the Spanish eventually returned, the Puebloan revolt ensured that New Mexico would develop with a unique blend of Spanish and native influences, which we see today, including the Orno itself. The stories you're telling cover hundreds and hundreds of years. You're still here. Mm -hmm. Same land, Spanish guns, same land, cannonballs, the petroglyphs in the hills, like you haven't been moved. And that's not everybody's story who was already here. Yeah, we were very lucky. A lot of tribes have respect for us here and that we still carry over 90% of our religion yet mm. since it was given to us by our great spirit. Our way of life here is more important to me because that has to be passed on. You can't even write our language. Mm. There's no alphabet at all in our language. So you got to speak it to keep it alive. Which is, this, this kind of comes back to cooking for me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the way you preserve this cooking technique didn't sound like you passed your kids a cookbook. <laughs> your grandmother didn't give you any written instructions. You just witnessed and repeated what you saw. And in that repetition, in that practice, you've kept it alive. Kind of like your religion, kind of like your language. You gotta practice it to yeah. keep doing it. Well, thank you so You're much welcome. for <laughs> sharing some of your words with me um, in your language, sharing some of your food with me, with your outdoor oven and your traditions and just taking so much time with me. I appreciate it. We're happy to do it. In our language, ta'a. Ta'a. Mm, that means thank you too. <laughs> mm. Thanks for watching. For more tales from the great outdoors, 
check out season two of America Outdoors with Baratunde Thurston. You can find us in the PBS video app or your local PBS station. Click the link in the description below to find out more.